All right. Well, welcome back, everybody. This is Troy Fullwood with Pinnacle Investments and the Thriving Investor. And um, I've been getting a lot of emails and questions and phone calls in regards to last week's passing of the 2017 tax reform bill, also known as President Trump's 2017 tax reform bill. And wanted to talk with you about the impact that this is going to have for real estate investors, both brick and mortar investors and real estate note investors, both on the residential and the commercial side of things. So um, the topic of tonight's talk is President Trump's 2017 tax reform bill impact for real estate investors. And the first thing we want to go ahead and just touch on, kind of bullet pointed a few things that I saw, highlights of the new tax bill. Well, the first thing is the primary home gain sell exclusion um, did not change. Okay, it did not change. It still remains uh, at two hundred fifty thousand to five hundred thousand. Whether you're single or married is what uh, what depends or what determines whether you go two fifty or five hundred thousand. And uh, it's eligible for properties um, that are lived in as the primary home for at least the last two out of the two out of the last five years. So um, that hasn't changed at all. So I know there's a lot of talk about it. A lot of people were up in arms about it, but uh, everything as is status quo moving forward. The next thing um, is HELOCs for primary homes are no longer tax deductible starting in 2018. However, um, if the HELOC proceeds that you are used to acquire or improve an improvement on the property, the related HELOC interest remains tax deductible. In other words, you can go out and get a HELOC on your house, but you actually have to use the money on your house. You can't uh, to have a tax deductible. If you take it and go buy a car or a boat, something like that, or a rental property, then it's, uh, then it's not, uh, the interest on it is no longer tax deductible. So um, you wanna keep track of that, if that's something you're going to do and you're getting ready to remodel your house or add a pool or something along those lines, then you're going to be just fine. But you need to make sure that, uh, that uh, it's spent just on that primary residence. Um, by the way, you know, proceeds taken out on investment properties continue to be tax deductible, provided the proceeds are used for investment properties and not personal expenses. So what they're basically saying is, yes, you can still do HELOCs. But if you're going to take the money and you're going to go spend it on cars and boats and travel and things of that nature, you're not going to have the benefit of it being tax deductible. Um, if you uh, use it on the properties that it's attached to or the lien that it's against, you're going to be just fine. All right. By the way, I want to, before I get too far into this, um, I probably should have said this in the beginning, but I'm not a financial expert. I'm a real estate investor. I've been a real estate investor for 21 years. I'm also not a CPA by any stretch of the imagination. So I would recommend that whatever I share with you here, that you go and confirm it with your um, either a tax attorney or your CPA, uh, given your current and your unique set of circumstances, because your set of circumstances are different than my set of circumstances. And everything I do, I always run by my legal counsel and I always run by my accountant to make sure that we're um, on the straight and narrow when it comes to staying within the guidelines of what the tax laws allow us to do and not to do. So I should have said that in the beginning. Sorry, I didn't say that earlier. Um, I forgot to look at my notes here, but wanted to at least put that out there. So make sure that whatever you're doing financially, that you're running it by uh, professional or financial professionals that you work with uh, wherever you're located at in the country. So jumping back into this. Um, item number three, interest deduction is limited to the first 750,000 of debt taken out after 1215 of 17 on both primary and secondary homes. Okay. Both primary and secondary homes. So um, you can go up to a $750,000 loan. Um, let's say you bought a million dollar home and you put down 250,000 and you, and you did a $750,000 mortgage on it. You'll be just fine. Same thing applies to the secondary house as well. Mortgage interest, uh, however, for investment properties continues to be tax deductible 
without the $750,000 limitation. So this is just on primary residences and secondary homes. So, um, and a lot of people have secondary homes, whether they're beach homes or they're um, up in the woods or even motor homes are considered secondary homes and even some boats are considered secondary homes. So, um, or fall into that category. So you'll be just fine. Not a lot's changed, but they did, uh, they did put a limit on it overall. Um, business entertainment expenses are no longer tax deductible starting in 2018. Now this is a big one for a lot of business owners and me, I'm a business owner. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are business owners and we were just talking about this over the weekend, but, um, they're no longer deductible. Um, therefore consider, you know, take some, if you're going to prepay for any entertainment expenses, um, maybe you want to do that before the end of 2017. We talked about that, you know, we read the bill, and like this is kind of odd, like how would you go ahead and do that? Um, I guess if you've got something that um, you know is gonna be happening next year, and it's already on your calendar, and it's already put together, you might wanna think about prepaying that um, before the clock strikes midnight, um, okay? Number five, in 2018, all business meals will be limited to 50% uh, tax deduction. So. Um, something to keep in mind is that they were originally 100% tax deductible, but now they're limited to 50%. So, um, something to consider there, something to pay attention to there, uh, in, in regards to your business. Um, it may or may not make a big deal in a lot of people's eyes, but at the end of the day, you will have some limitations in that field. Um, Next one, if you're an investor purchasing business assets for your real estate activities, there will now be 100% bonus depreciation uh, deduction available if the asset was purchased after 927 of 17. So you get a little bit of extra um, write-off uh, expenses. In other words, you know you get an immediate write-off of this particular expense, uh, meaning um, cars, um, equipment, tools, computers. Anything that has to do with your business, I tend to think more along the real estate lines, but I know there's probably other people out there that have other businesses listening to this. And so anything that's an asset for your business now has a 100% um, bonus depreciation deduction available. Now, the good part about that is it results in an immediate write-off of the expense versus the need to depreciate it over time. Um, the bonus depreciation applies to both new and used items. Bonus depreciation can also be applied to vehicles used in real estate businesses, although subject to certain limitations. Okay, so keep that in mind. Like I said, I'm going to share kind of the, the 10,000 foot view of what I've taken out of this bill. I'm sharing that with you to kind of bring and enlighten people as to it's, um, the opportunities that exist and some of the new changes that we're going to have to be dealing with going forward. But more importantly, take time to sit down with a tax professional or a, um, whether it be an accountant or an attorney and have them look over your set of circumstances so that they can guide you uh, much more effectively on a personal professional level um, versus just what I'm saying here. I'm just trying to bring, um, I say light to the opportunities that exist and the possibilities and just wanting to make everybody aware, hey, a few things have changed. Um, unlike last week, it seemed like everybody was talking about the sky was falling and uh, obviously not the case at all. Uh, Section 179 allows for certain taxpayers to take an immediate deduction of up to $1 million on assets placed in service um, for a business. So uh, this, this excludes um, real estate. In the past, this excluded real estate activities. But starting in 2018, this is now available to non-residential real estate and appears to be available for lodging businesses such as dormitory and Airbnb. I mean, those of you that are out there with the Airbnb rental properties, congratulations. You've got another um, nice little uh, tool that you can use. Um, examples of eligible assets might include roofs, heating, um, AC, fire protection, and security system. So those are just a couple of examples that uh, will have um, a nice deduction for you going forward. So congratulations there. Number eight, the new tax reform limits 
the deduction of certain business interest expenses to 30% of taxable business income. Luckily, most uh, real estate businesses are exempt from this limitation. So it really kind of depends on what your niche is in the real estate business world as to how this is going to personally impact you versus say a competitor or somebody else that you know in the business world. So if you're a brick and mortar investor, uh, rehabber, it's gonna have a different impact than it would on me being a note investor, as well as somebody who might be a multifamily investor, it's gonna have a different impact on them. Once again, go back to um, your professional uh, inner circle consultants and run this by them to see how it, positively or negatively impacts your business and then what you can do to change it okay and what you can do to change it uh, although uh, although 1031 exchanges uh, is repealed from most business asset it remains intact for real property so um, you know it's still a strong strategy for investors you know looking to sell rentals and defer taxes down the road so this is a good thing this is a positive thing uh, it did get removed from other businesses, but it did not affect the real estate world. Um, if you decide to sell a property, capital gains remain intact under the new law. Okay, therefore holding properties for one year can qualify for a lower tax rate as in previous years. Okay, so something to keep in mind. Now, once again, you've got to you've got to sit down with your accountant, um, your tax attorney, and sit down with them and see how that's going to impact your business model. And the reason I say that, and I keep wanting to hammer that home throughout this video, is I know a lot of people in real estate. You know, I, I've got relationships on Wall Street, I've got relationships on Main Street. Um, you know, we've got a database of over 51,000 people that um, have different, they're passionate about different areas of real estate. And, and that's great. And, Everybody's got their own level of success, which is fantastic. But, at the, but in the end, they also have their own liabilities and responsibilities that they need to sit down with their professional guidance um, attorney or uh, CPA that will help them guide them through the process. I'm um, getting down here to the end. We'll wrap this up here quickly. Um, you will not be able to accelerate depreciation of commercial and rental properties. Okay, so, um, you know, that's not necessarily a great thing. Um, the appreciation for residential and commercial properties remains at 27.5 years and 39 years respectively. Okay, so you're not gonna be able to accelerate that out, but then again, nothing's changed. It's uh, status quo, you get to move forward based on what you already know there. Uh, tax preparation fees are no longer deductible in 2018 as an itemized deduction, okay? So, uh, However, the fees are still deductible against rental income, so make sure to allocate a reasonable percentage of your tax preparation fees to a Schedule E to lock in uh, that tax benefit. Okay, so keep that in mind. I'm sure accountants all over the world or all over the country will have uh, some kind of answer to that and how to uh, address that going forward. We'll see how that plays out. Number 13, the amount that is free from estate taxes is doubled to to $11 million for single people and $22 million for married people. Now, this is a, this is a huge benefit for, um, for our country, not just real estate investors, but this is a huge benefit for our entire country. I say that because I've got a lot of friends that are 65 and older. And these people have got nice size estates and they've got nice property holdings and things like that. And, and one of the things I've heard them discussing for the last two or three years as they've kind of gotten more into that retirement cycle of life, they're slowing down, they don't want to be doing all the stuff they're doing, is now they're trying to figure out, okay, how do I navigate out of this, you know, and how do I minimize my estate taxes if not completely you know, do away with them. And so they're constantly meeting with various financial advisors. And this here, the fact that they doubled it, just made their life a whole lot easier. And it's saving them a bunch of money in regards to strategies and extra things that they've been, that they were having to do uh, for their portfolios and for their families and for their spouses and 
and, uh, and for charities. A lot of them were donating things to charities. So there's a lot of things that um, are positive about this. And those of you that are not quite at this level, hey, this is, this is great. Let's hope that this stays this way for years to come. It could potentially change. But right now, this is what we have to work with, which is great. Um, with Schedule C Corporation's new lower rate, tax rate of 21%, some real estate businesses may pay lower taxes by operating under the structure, okay? Once again, you've got to really look at where you're at in your business, in the business growth, and how you're going into 2018. What kind of things can you do to change and lower your taxes legally so that you, you know, you don't, you pay your share, but you don't need to pay any more than your share is, is what I believe in. And so um, something to keep in mind in going forward. Although the corporate tax rates are lower, the downside of double taxation still remains in effect. So make sure you discuss any entity modifications thoroughly with your tax advisor. Okay. Um, the new tax reform provides certain flow through business income with a 20% deduction with which essentially makes 20% of the profit to be tax free. Okay. Now this is, it's funny how they write the tax bills because how they write it and then how I read it or you read it and then how the accountant applies it and then how the IRS um, handles it oftentimes can be a very um, confusing set of opinions and or perspectives and even execution wise. So um, this is once again goes back to, you know, uh, sitting down, you know, the benefit is available. This benefit is available for income earned through LLCs, S corporations, partnerships, sole proprietorships, and Schedule E rentals. Certain service based businesses will not qualify, okay, if the taxpayer's taxable income is above 207000 to 415000 based on single or married. Uh, for non-service based businesses with income above 157 and 315 single versus married additional uh, limitation need to be factored in if the taxable income is above this threshold this deduction does not apply to interest dividends and capital gains income okay so has it gotten better yes but then the responsibility now falls on our shoulders as real estate investors and business owners to meet with our tax professionals and say, okay, how is it where I'm at today? How is this, how do I need to change? If I need to change, how is it going to impact me by the end of 2018? What kind of changes can I expect? And do I need to start to put the wheels in motion in January so that I don't get surprised in December of 18? Um, with something that blindsides me that I could have handled earlier in the year. Okay. So um, that's it. I mean, that's, uh, that's it. I mean, very simple, very straightforward. These are just some uh, general takeaways that we picked up on. Hopefully uh, there's a couple nuggets in there. Hopefully there's a few things that are aha moments. But once again, you know, I meet with my tax professionals, my tax team, um, two to four times a year, and we map out a game plan based on the goals and last year's, um, you know, accomplishments and what we want to accomplish in 2018, which is what we'll be focusing on here in January when we meet again. And these are the things that we're going to be talking about. These are the topics that we're going to be talking about. And we're going to be seeing if there's anything that I need to do based on where I'm currently at. And I would highly recommend or encourage you to do the same thing. If you don't have somebody that's, um, that you trust, um, please you know, go out and find somebody in your area, whether you find that through a networking group or you um, spend some time maybe researching it on the internet or ask some friends and family who they would recommend. Find somebody that you can trust that you can work with that can help guide you and your business uh, so that you don't get surprised by anything uh, that has changed in the new bill. Keep in mind that we have not had any tax reform bills through the government, and I believe it was 30 years ago. I think it was during the Reagan administration. So 
we've been kind of living with what we have for a very, very long time. And we've become fairly comfortable and fairly knowledgeable about what we can and can't do. Some of those things are going to change. Not all of them, but some of them will change. And so we need to re-educate ourselves and see just how much of it will change for us as investors, as business owners, um, how we can benefit from this, and then ultimately how we can move forward. So with that being said, have a great day. Take care. God bless. Bye now.